I don't ever wanna feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way in the place I love. Making music with, with my band. And the most sacred thing that I have going is creating sound with, with my best friends. I just have to uh, suggest, to gently suggest that you make the most out of your life and treat every single person that you meet with love and respect. I don't care what class you come from, what race you come from, what gender you come from. People are people. You're gonna be assholes and you're gonna be amazing people. Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers was born November 1st, 1962. Since then, the band has sold countless records, been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and even earned a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Despite the profound impact Kiedis has had on the world, he believes kindness is the number one way to make the world a better place. What's one thing that you believe would make the world a better place? Just one thing. My honest answer would be kindness. My sort of self-centered answer would be music. And my super centric answer would be air that you can breathe. Having just come from Cairo where the simple, taken for granted, act of breath is not an option. Let's go with kindness. I feel like when you get to the metaphorical gates of Peter, really all they're going to ask you is, were you kind? And I, I don't know, maybe the whole point of this little tiny blink of an eye that we're here is just to decrease the suffering through kindness and other thoughtful acts. Could be painting, it could be caregiving, you know, it could be just smiling. That's all. Anthony was recently a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience. The conversation was one of my favorites, and I think we can all learn from Anthony's simple yet profound philosophy on life. Sometimes I'm shy and bashful and reclusive and I just want to chill chill and people want to take pictures or have, right. me, have me talk to their girlfriend on the phone or yeah small price small price this brings me to my new philosophy in life which I remind myself every day so two months ago we were playing at the MetLife Stadium in New Jersey big beautiful stadium full of people excited to sing and dance and these two painter sisters from Texas raised in Manhattan brought their friend to the show we're like great come and we'll hook you up with tickets and passes come say hello beautiful people and the girl they brought was radiant in every aspect of the word physically beautiful energy kindness just light and all of my friends are like, who's that girl? That girl's amazing. Just a, a friend of our painter friends. And a week went by and I opened the paper and I saw this girl had died unexpectedly. Went 33 year old actor, model, artist. Wow. And she woke up and died. And they're not sure why, maybe sepsis, <clears throat> who knows? Young people are dying these days. And I thought to myself, I woke up today and I complained about how long my room service took, how muggy it was outside and the traffic. And, and I decided this, this girl was just a giver of a human being and she got plucked. So I said to myself, don't be a bitch. Nothing to do with gender or animals, yeah. just bitchliness, selfishness, yeah. self-obsessed self-centered whiny weakness yeah and and what do i have to complain about right let's look around the world yeah syria yemen ukraine right on and on yeah so every time i go there which is daily i wake up and i'm like hey, where's, where's my thing and how come these people aren't doing what i want them to do the voice comes into my head don't be a bitch right so that's my new live by philosophy that's do you meditate at all I do meditate at all, not enough, <laughs> but I do, and I love it, and it's my go-to, Yeah, and uh, I believe in it. Rick Rubin actually shared the 
the art of meditation with me when I was a kid, younger, early 90s. Um, he brought the TM Institute mm. into his living room and offered the whole band an opportunity to learn. And I did it religiously for a while, and then I put it down. But now whenever I feel like the, the monkey mind... Mm. In a car, in a plane, in a train, in my bathtub, in a tiny little kid's chair somewhere on the back porch. I'll take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's profound. We went to a, a Native American reservation Wednesday, last Wednesday, to play a show. And about nine months ago, we were putting out all this music and Flea had been to a, a powwow and he's like the dancing blew me away they're so dedicated they're so beautiful so artful it's like we got to get to a reservation and play music I was like great idea let's do it so it finally came to pass last Wednesday and uh, somehow we chose the Hoopa tribe in Northern California in Hoopa Valley California and we arrive and it's a school gymnasium and it's a free concert and all of our equipment is there and it's just cool people. They're very poor and very isolated and we just wanted to go rock out for them. But the first thing they did was give us all this cool stuff that they made, which is Native American gear and mm -hmm. they wanted us to wear it. They're not worried about appropriation. We could sing songs all day long about our take, like my band, on their experience. They love it. If we get it right, if we get it wrong, they just love that we care. Mm. And it was the best show of the year for us because nobody paid. It was kids in a school gymnasium in the middle of nowhere. Surreal. They didn't believe we were coming. They're like, <laughs> we don't believe it. Why? Why us? Like, ah, we chose you. Let's just have fun. That's amazing. But they, they definitely defied the concept of appropriation, like right off the bat. Here's our stuff. Please, please wear it. We love the culture. We love it. And, you know, people are people. Um, I don't care what class you come from, what race you come from, what gender you come from. People are people. You're going to be assholes and you're going to be amazing people. Just people are people. Listening to the Chili Peppers, there is a vivid sense of nature passing through their music. It's no surprise to me that Anthony is a frequent surfer and has a deep connection with the ocean. The ocean is so full of life and peace and nature and excitement. That, that's my, my tank these days. Yeah, you were telling me about your love of surfing the other day. You love it, huh? I do because it gives me that, that feeling, that freedom and the, there's an energy. Um, I just, that's what I want to do till the day I die. Wow. Just go sit out there waiting for a wave. If you think about the storms, 3,000 miles away, raging in the ocean, sending that, that wave of energy through the water, when it finally releases, when it hits the shallows, it's a rush. It's a drug. It's a high. It's a natural high where you're next to whales and dolphins and pelicans and eels and anemones and just looking back at the coast with a different point of view no phone no technology whatsoever just water and a board there's also a thing about being next to the ocean that's very humbling i think it's very good for people mm -hmm. to be so just confronted by inescapable beauty and power of mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. and that's what uh, oceans do I need that I need to be humbled daily it's good for everybody the mountains do the same thing they do yeah 100% yeah you know what the the root of that word is which word humble humble no to be close to the ground to be low to the ground oh really yeah that makes sense yeah, yeah feels right if you know the chili peppers you know their hit song under the bridge not only is it a musical masterpiece but it's evident that the song was crafted from a place of raw emotion and truth. The hardest of the hard, the gangsters of LA, I'll be riding down the Sunset Boulevard and I'll hear under the bridge coming out of a low rider 
and it is the toughest, scariest, most, you know, loked out looking dudes just melting with under the bridge. Mm. I'm like, okay. That was that was a day well spent in you know, writing that song. The song on a new record called Under the Bridge, which is a salad, a ballad, if you will. And, uh, and that song came about because um, during the course of my life, uh, I was uh, what you might call a hardcore junkie for many years. And uh, during that point in my life, it was a very sad time. And, and uh, everything that was beautiful and precious and sacred to me sort of took a bag of seats. Um, as, as my need for this chemical dependency just got more and more disgusting and insane. And unfortunately, I've been clean for three years now, and my life took some massive changes, and, uh, and everything that was sacred and beautiful that I had lost had now come back to me more than I could have ever hoped for. But during that time, I reached some, some ultimately low depths of incomprehensible demoralization, uh, you know, which are, are very much in my memory. And, uh, and, and part of that incomprehensible demoralization is loneliness. And, um, and that's, that's something that I think every drug addict can relate to, is there's this incredible deep sense of loneliness, of emptiness, that you're trying to fill up with whatever it is you find. And in my case, it was drugs. So it's sometimes like a deep burst of loneliness that, that um, kind of remind me of, of that point in my life. And uh, one day I was driving back from the rehearsal for this last record that we were writing, and, and I got one of those bursts of loneliness, and, and I didn't really feel like there was a single soul in the universe that I could connect with. You know, on, on a gut level, on a heart level, on a spiritual level, on a level of love, I just felt like I was all by myself. So I started singing to myself um, on the freeway, on the Hollywood freeway, coming back from rehearsal. And without, without thinking about anything, um, an entire song came into my head. And when I got home, I wrote it down. And... Uh, and the crux of the song is, is based on loneliness. And, and there's this one little lyrical phrase that comes in at the very end of the song, which says, under the bridge downtown is where I drew some blood. Under the bridge downtown, forgot about my love. Under the bridge downtown, I could not get enough. Under the bridge downtown, I gave my life away. And what that was referring to was a point in time about five years ago when uh, when I had nothing in my life. I had no, no friends or... Uh, or places to live, or automobiles, or relationships with my family, and all, all I had was this uh, this connection of mine named Mario, who was a Mexican mafia ex-convict, and, and he and I would stroll the streets of downtown um, looking for our next score. And on, on one particular afternoon, it was very hot in the middle of summer, and I'd been up for days, and he and I found what we were looking for, and we went to this bridge that was downtown in the middle of Los Angeles in this ghetto, and it was a, a freeway bridge. And um, there was a little passageway that you had to go to to get under the bridge. And, and only certain members of this Mexican gang, which were all ex-convicts, were allowed to go in there. And the reason that they let me in is because this guy Mario said that I was going out with his sister, which was a lie, just so we could go in there and, um, and do what it is we wanted to do, which was to use these particular drugs we had just gotten. And, uh, and that always sticks in my brain as... Um, you know, a low point in my life, basically. You know, about as low as, as I could get. And uh, the chorus of the song is, I don't ever want to... I don't ever want to feel like I did that day. Take me to the place I love. Take me all the way. The place I love is where I am now. Uh, making music with, with my band, and, which is, to me, you know, the most sacred thing that I have going is, uh, is creating sound with, with my best friends.